Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Danius. How are you doing? Good. You are on. Thank you so much for taking the time. We went ahead and just jumped right in. I hope that's okay with you. Thank you. I had a little trouble. I had to switch uh, browsers. I couldn't get in. So my apologies. No, please do not worry about it at all. We have all been so excited to, to talk to you today. And uh, so we have some friends on this morning. Um, so Terry, um, I've been seeing you personally for some time, quite a few years actually. And Terry has been such a great friend and counselor to me personally and to a lot of folks that I know actually. And so we asked her to join us this morning on Ignite's page to just help us kind of tackle these times and think about how we can um, focus in on our feelings and how to like actually overcome these challenging times. So Terry, I'm going to let you take it away and then we can just have a conversation as we go along. I hope that's okay. Sure. That's great. Thank you. So I want to start with saying that uh, what we think has lots of power. And I kind of like to think of our, our thoughts, like what we put into our brain is like the food we put into our body. Yeah. So like, if we put junk food into our body, we're going to feel really kind of crappy and not have much energy. If you eat too many hostess cupcakes or, you know, yucky cookies or whatever. But our negative thoughts are sort of like junk food. Yeah. And if we put a lot of junk food into our brains, we're going to feel yucky. And instead, if we eat healthy food, we're going to have more energy and feel better. And that's sort of what positive thoughts are like. If you put positive thoughts into your body, into your brain, you're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. And so I kind of want to talk a little bit about how our thoughts are connected to our emotions, to our behaviors. So what it means, so we call it like the thought triangle. It's cognitive behavioral therapy. So our thinking drives almost everything we do, okay? Our thinking, so like if it's a rainy day, we could be thinking, oh man, this really stinks. And then you're gonna feel kind of down on the dumps and you're gonna feel lethargic and you're not gonna get up and do anything. Right. You could also have the same rainy day, same rainy day, and you could say, hey, it's a rainy day. You could say, I'm a little you know, bummed about that. I want to ride my bike, but man, I'm gonna use this time to go out and clean my closet that I've been wanting to do forever. <laughs> and you can feel good about something and accomplish something. So it's the same rainy day. And so if you think about like where we're at in today's environment with the coronavirus, okay, with COVID-19, we don't have much control over that. We have to focus on what we do have control over. And what we have control over, one is our thoughts, okay? And what do we want to do with those? If we dwell in the negative thoughts and the worry and things that we don't have control over, it's again, it's like eating that yucky food. It's going to bring us down. Instead, if we focus on something more positive, what do we have control over? Like I have control over cleaning my closet up. I have control over reaching out to a friend that I haven't talked to for a while. I have control over even though I can't maybe get out and do a whole lot now, I can still do some exercise in my house. I can still do some, you know, large body movements. I can still write a letter to a friend. There's lots we have control over that can help us stay positive in this crazy environment we're in. Is, is this making any sense to you at all? Absolutely. I know that we talk a lot about that. Um, just being able to to think about those thoughts now and in controlling them. And you've taught me a really good um, system that I've used for a long time. Um, I'm obsessed with organizing. And so one is my plastic totes. Put all my thoughts into my negative thoughts into my plastic totes. And little by little, as I can control them and work through them, get them out. And as cheesy as that is, it's worked for me for years. Right. Um, so... I uh, went ahead and and asked folks if they had questions at this time. Please let us know if you have any you know specific questions for Terry. But Terry, when you in the meantime, I'll go ahead and ask you when you talk about controlling your thoughts. What are some other mechanisms that you kind of coach people along in order sure. to do that, especially now, right when it's so difficult to do that? So the one of the things we actually do is have you write out your negative thoughts. Okay, so. So like if your thought is like, um, I don't know, I'm going to get sick from this coronavirus. Okay. I'm going to get sick. That's a, a negative thought. 
Okay, so then you write out the, where's the rationale for that? You know, where's the evidence that that's 100% true, that you're going to get sick? Well, the only evidence we have, for example, is that there have been some people in Ohio that's gotten sick. There are people that are getting sick. Okay, so that's evidence that you could get sick. But then you take another step. Where's the evidence that it's not 100% true? So if you look like in the state of Ohio, yes, there's been a a little over 4,000 people that have gotten sick. But Ohio has like, I don't know what, 12 million people in it. 4,000 out of 12 million, that's not a high percentage of people that's going to get sick. You can also say, here's some other evidence that I'm not going to get sick. Well, I'm limiting going to the grocery store or I'm not going at all. I'm doing the Kroger click list or whatever you're using. When I bring this stuff in, I'm wiping it all down. You know, I'm washing my hands a lot. I'm doing the social distancing. So you're listing all the things that are saying, what's not 100% true that you're going to get sick. And then you come up with what we call a more rational thought. Well, there's always a chance I could get sick, but the likelihood is pretty low considering I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah. so then, yeah. then you, so you're writing out a more rational statement as opposed to the, 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 the negative, I'm going to get sick. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I'm looking, you're, so what happens is our feelings are driving us, our feelings, this anxiety, this worry, as opposed to the facts. So we're trying to get you out of the feelings and say, where are the facts to support that feeling and then move you to a more rational thought? Yeah, those are really, really good, good logical steps to take. Um, some of the things that I've seen with folks here recently that we talked to is um, they have the plan, they know their goals, Um, But the execution, like, for example, this morning, like you talked about, it's rainy, you wake up and you're already like, oh, this is going to be a terrible day. You know, let's just say that's right. Right. Um, How do you help some of these um, folks that you see like control, but then also sustain? So um, how do we Mm -hmm. keep those thoughts accountable to what it is our goal is? Well, a couple of things I would do there. So one, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, we have to do some grounding techniques, okay? So when our brains start to go to those negatives and our feelings start to go to those negative feelings, again, feelings aren't good or bad, they're right or wrong. They're just, we call them positive and negative. The first thing I really like to do is breathe, deep breaths. You take like three really deep breaths in. And what I like to do is I say, breathe in the Holy Spirit, Okay. When you take that deep breath in, if you breathe in the Holy Spirit, it can start to calm you down. So what, when our thoughts are going negative, um, again, those are thoughts for the brain. We got to bring the brain back down. Okay. So the first thing is breathe. The second thing is um, body. Do some kind of large body movements. Something to, if because if we're holding in negative, I'll call it negative energy or that worry or something, you know, you can do what we call tensing and relaxing. Take your fists and squeeze them for like 10 seconds and then relax. I call it like be like cook spaghetti. Just relax your body and try to take a couple more deep breaths. And then again, you go back to the positive thoughts. I really like to use gratitude. OK, sometimes when we can get buried into all the negative stuff, we forget what we have to be grateful for. And so if you could just take that moment when you're starting to go negative again and say, what are three things I can be grateful for? Because there's some research that for every one negative thought, we have to have three positive thoughts. So we can just say, I'm just grateful. I am grateful that it's raining because, hey, now the flowers are going to start growing again. Or I am grateful that I have a home in here that I'm, I have a home to be in and I'm not out in a tent. I'm not homeless and it's raining. I am, you know, so you're just I'm thankful that I can be with my kids today. You can play something with your kids today inside. Does that make sense? So gratitude is one of the best ways I know to get us back into that state of being positive and to, again, find joy in our life. That's good. (sighs) Terry, you must be so busy these days. (laughs) And Um, it's... It's just amazing. You serve so many people and and you do what you do and yet you remain so positive. So 
One last question for you, and then I'll let you go. I know you have a really busy day. How do you yourself, as you carry all of these stories and pain from other people, how do you remain positive? How do you remain? How do I? Um, yeah. I for me, I, it's my faith in God. Okay. So when I um, go to bed at night, I, obviously I have a lot, I have heard a lot of hard stories and Every time I think I've heard it all, so, someone comes into my office with something else. And I'm like, and I keep going back to God, God, how, you know, how is this possible? And I mean, I heard another story yesterday from a 20 year old and it's just like floored me I, once again. So what I always go back to is God. I, so when I go to sleep at night, when I lay my head down on the pillow, I often pray specifically for people, but I really visualize. So like your container visualization is really important to use all of our senses. I picture putting the people in my hands and handing them over to God. And what helps me at night is to know that God loves them more than me. And so he's, and I use him. I don't know. I could not be a counselor. I'm just being uh, totally honest with you now. I couldn't be do my job without him because there are times when I'm in a session or I'm like, I don't even know where to go with some things sometimes. And I'm like, okay, God, help me out here. And things come out of my mouth. That I'm like, I know that are not for me. And so I am so grateful to have this job. And I think, you know, my background, I used to be in IT, and that was another God story to lead me here. But I'm grateful to do this job, I, but I just couldn't do it without him. So it's my faith in him. It's my belief that he, I really do believe God is the great healer. Um, and so I, that's what sustains me throughout all this, where I get my energy from. Is that Answer. I'm sorry. It was a little long answer for you. No, it's great. It's so good. Um, that was amazing. Thank you for that. Um, we have several people at some point. You'll have to go through the comments when we're done here and it's posted. Okay. But there's several people who are um, just saying hello to you. Um, there is one question that I think we can answer pretty quickly is, um, should I go to a counselor only when things are bad? Absolutely not. See, I I compare going to counseling like getting your oil changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you go for your, or, or you could do your annual visits to your uh, primary care physician. But I think counseling is a little bit more than just once a year. So, like, your oil changes like every couple of months. Mm -hmm. To go, sometimes just to have a neutral person to talk some things out. They can help you see things from a different perspective. They, you know, again, when we can't, I've gone to my own counselor. I'll just confess that because we can't see it in ourselves. So going on some kind of a, like an oil change basis every couple of months, it's like a tune up. And then you get reminded of things. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember when we talked about that. It's so that's what I would recommend. Not just when you absolutely need it. Um, and then you already have a relationship established with the therapist. So that when you do need it for a tougher time, you already have that connection. Yeah, it makes it so much better when you have that relationship established to have those difficult conversations. So definitely agreed. Well, Terry, that was so good. There was so much good, valuable information. I wrote down a lot of it. I will rewatch this and make sure that I provide some highlights to those who are going to watch this later. Okay. And then we'll just hand it over to you. If there's anything you want to share as we as we head out, um, sure. just so you know, too, I'll make sure I include Terry's information in the comments and the post so that if you're interested in reaching out to her, you can do that. I just want to say thank you. I love what Ignite Columbus is doing for the city. I love that you started this from the ground up and um, we've got so much that we can give back to others. That's another way to help us when we are too inner focused or worried and anxious by being other focused and doing something else for someone else. That's really one of the best things that we can do to get out of our own funk and to be focused on someone else. So thank you for all you do for Ignite Columbus. I appreciate everything you do. And thank you for letting me be here this morning. It's a privilege. Thanks for coming on, Terry. All Good right. Much. All right, thank friends. You. We will share Terry's information. And we hope that this encourages you and gives you that strength that you need to understand that you can do this and that it's going to be amazing at the end. So. We're going to get through this together. Thank Absolutely. you. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.